everybody. Thanks for joining me on another uh, Friday, Saturday morning edition of the live stream. Uh, I can't stay too long this time. I've got a, a couple of errands to run this morning. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to give you guys a couple of updates. Uh, what's going on with us. And uh, answer a couple of your questions. And we've got uh, fun snack time. And then I will be back again next week. Uh, of course, with another live stream. So that's, that seems to be the way things are going. Uh, how's everybody doing? I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, let me know where you guys are from. You know, it's, uh, it's always fun to know where, uh, where, where, the, where everyone's tuning in from. I'm, I'm here in Japan still. Um, probably, well, you know, the, the, the plan is to be back in Canada sometime next month. Um, going back to, into Canada as it stands, um, I'll spend two weeks in my apartment. So we we have to hello from France, New York City. What's up, Kentucky? Hello. So uh, traveling back in Mississauga, fantastic. Toronto, thanks so much for joining. So uh, going back to Canada, there's a, a two week quarantine for those uh, uh, traveling from outside of the country. So uh, for two weeks, I'll be doing live streams from my uh, Montreal apartment, um, Idaho, in the house. So um, they may not be as exciting. Bangkok, hello, hello. Um, I'm going to try and have some uh, folks at the office uh, drop some stuff off at my door. So I'll, I'll at least have something to show uh, for show and tell. Um, so, uh, yeah, there, there will be some, uh, some Montreal quarantine edition of these live streams coming up soon. Um, then uh, we'll, I'll be staying. Uh, my wife and I will be staying in Canada for uh, a couple of weeks. Um, probably up through, uh, like Black Friday events. So we'll make sure that all that stuff goes, uh, goes smoothly and we've got all the best deals for you guys. Um, and then we'll head back here, um, to Japan. Then I'm sure we'll have another, uh, we have to get like a COVID test before we come. Uh, Canadian ship reviews. Oh yeah. You will definitely get Canadian ship reviews. There are some interesting Canadian ships. Um, last time, well, hello from Jakarta. Wow. The whole, what, the whole world is here. Um, yeah, they, we've got uh, we've got some we definitely have some unique flavors in Canada. Uh, m many people know about ketchup chips, but did you know we actually had ketchup Doritos? Um, that was a limited thing. I don't know if they're still there when uh, when uh, I get back, but uh, I guess we'll find out. Hello from Texas. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll have some fun Canadian snack reviews, um, and we will try to have a, a, a fun time with the uh, with the home edition. Uh, live stream. So uh, we will uh, head back to Japan probably sometime in December. Uh, hello from Paris. And hope, uh, fingers crossed, hopefully the world is a little bit more normal by then. Uh, who knows? Um, and uh, yeah, I wonder, I, I truly wonder. Hello, hello. Uh, yeah, things are good. Uh, I truly wonder if we will be able to travel again in January to around the world to uh, to visit all of our, our retail partners and attend trade shows. So we'll see. Um, do you think that it's still a possibility to find a, a reuse salvage? Been trying to find one so hard. Uh, send me a DM. Um, I don't think that there's anything in our warehouse left. Um, I can put a call out on our social media for you. And uh, maybe someone in the community has got a pair that they're uh, willing to give up. I got a mystery pocket tee from the Tatian Yoko uh, from Tatian Yoko this week. You're not kidding; those shirts are amazing. I'm glad you enjoy them. I'm I'm wearing one now. I, I wear them pretty much all the time. Um, they will last. I'm not gonna say they're gonna last forever because nothing lasts forever, but they really last a long time. I mean, I the ones I wear get thrown in the wash every week, um, and I've been wearing them for years, no problems. Um, Will you make kaiju again? Probably not. Probably not. Um, um, so, uh, what do you think the odds of our Naked and Famous doing another collaboration with another Japanese brand? Um, unless they're carried in Tati and Yoko, it's it's not going to happen. Um, so, that's, uh, that's that. But I'm really into... Um, the types of projects that we're doing now where we can do them with um, different properties. You know, I really, I'm really having fun with this nostalgia trip that we're going through. And 
I think that's the way to go. I think that's the future of things. It is much more. You have much more freedom, creative, much more freedom, creativity. I didn't even, it's very early. <laughs> Creatively, it, I've got a lot more freedom with projects like that. Um, so I think that's, and it, I think it, it also ties in uh, to a lot of the kind of other stuff that we like. So I think that's, that's going to be the wave of the future for us. Um, I want to order jeans for Indigo Invitational, but how long does it usually take uh, shipping from Tate and Yoko to California? About three or four days. Um, with Indigo Invitational, you have to be registered by the 1st, and then you have to uh, do your first like check-in with your new pair by October 10th. Don't quote me on that. Check the website. Um, so even if you're getting the MIJ7s, which come out September 25th, this coming Friday, um, we should have those shipped out and uh, uh, to, in your hands uh, in time to uh, you know do all the registration stuff. I'm ensuring that... All of the MIJ7 Hemmings get pushed to the top of the priority for that reason. So, um, yeah, that's how, that's what's going on with that. Also, with the uh, Selvage Foundation tees, those should be ready next week. Um, they were they were going to be... Anyways, there was some issue with the printer. Uh, and uh, they're... Anyway, good thing we checked everything. So, uh, that stuff is going to be ready next week. Um, and we will have those in your hands very soon. Um, tradesmen, tradeswoman pants, like, uh, like carpenter pants. I don't know if we would ever do a carpenter pant. Um, I don't know if I want belt loops on, uh, people want those so much. Um, I bought a kimono shirt. Is there any way to soften the fabric without running, ruining the garment? Um, you can wash them. I mean, I wash mine. Um, I guess it depends on the fabric. It's the sakiori. Maybe you want to wash that one by hand. But, uh, yeah, kimono shirts go in the wash. Um, you can maybe, instead of if you're worried about shrinkage, they might shrink a little bit. Um, keep them out of the dryer. Hand, uh, uh, hand wash, hang dry, and uh, I think you'll be okay there. Um, what am I wearing this fall? Um, this... <laughs> Um, I don't know. Uh, I have a couple of shirts from this season. Um, I have a uh, the Melton flannel, which is really nice, uh, and the uh, the silk blend uh, uh, flannel. That thing is crazy. It's so. It's, I, I just like our loose weave. I, I love our loose weave flannels. I pretty much wear them. Uh, that's my uniform of the fall. It's not quite fall yet. It's still like thirty degrees here, which is like eighty something Fahrenheit. So. Still pretty warm. Um, I haven't had to really break out anything fall folly quite yet. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I need to cover. Um, MIJ7 comes out this coming Friday. Hyperflex Stretch Selvage came out today. Um, yeah, I think that's all of the housekeeping stuff. Oh. Okay, you know what? I wanted to talk about this because it was just a weird thing that happened this week, and I don't know if you, you are watching, but um, if you are, then this this is for you. So, you know, we get a lot of people emailing us asking for jobs, and you know, depending on you know all all kinds of positions, and you know, we're not as big a company as people think. You know, we don't need uh, ten designers. We don't need uh, you know bunch of photographers and things like that so um you know usually it's just uh okay thank you for your you know some well you know you can't answer every email you can't answer every message there's there's a lot that come through but uh i got one that just really stood out because of how bad it was and i don't think it was you know and it was like it was it was not it was it was so bad that I felt like writing an email back to the person saying, hey, don't do that. You got to improve all of these things. Otherwise, you're going to have a hard time. But midway through just writing this email, I was like, mm, I don't know if someone's going to be so receptive of, a, of an email telling them how badly they're... Uh, approach sucked and I, I wasn't I wasn't like trying to rip on them I was just trying to provide them with some uh, constructive criticism 
Konnichiwa. Um, so I, uh, I, I didn't send that email and I thought maybe if, if that person is watching, they will, they will hear me and, uh, they can hear the, the, uh, the compassion I have for that situation because this person said they were in fashion school and they were finishing school. Well, I don't know if they were finishing school, but they were, they were still in fashion school and the, yeah, I know. Um, and the, uh, the resume and email for the, the position they were looking, they were looking for a designer position and straight up, all the email said was y'all looking for a merch designer, not merchandise designer, merch designer, question mark. And then two documents, a PDF of their resume and a portfolio of their work. And I was like, really? Like, I don't think you can, you know, between friends, maybe that's a, an email you can send to another person, but you shouldn't really email that with that tone to people you don't know. You don't know who's hiring you. You don't know how people are going to react to that. And I thought, okay, fine. This is just a young person being, you know, casual. And I open the resume and it is just full of spelling mistakes. And one of the glaring ones was skills was spelt with a Z, S K I L L Z or Z for Americans. And I was like, really, is that a typo or are they trying to be cool? I don't know. And then on top of that, it was like work experience. Instead of like a description of their experience, it was um, performed excellently, great customer service. And I was like, you can't do that. You, you have to explain to me what it is that you did at those jobs. And even if those jobs are irrelevant to the current job, you know, if you worked at a restaurant or you worked wherever, you have to say, I cashed out. I did this. I handled money. Like... Not, it, it, I just couldn't believe. Anyways, I was I was just it was such an ill prepared resume. Um, it didn't talk about any of their fashion experience other than the fact that they were a student still. Um, you know, software wise, if you're going to be a designer, you have to talk about what kind of design software you're you're comfortable with. You have to talk to me about the types of machines that you're comfortable using. Um, you'd be surprised how many fashion students come through our uh, building and then we show them an industrial machine and they are like, oh my God, I, I can't use that. I use a home sewing machine and it's like, okay, then like you can't be in this position until you know that stuff. You realize that, right? So... Um, and then, you know, it's a chicken before the egg kind of thing. Like, how can you have experience on with certain machines if you've never had the chance to work on certain machines? But, you know, those are things we're willing to train and, and, and do that type of thing. So, anyways, I don't know if this person is watching, but this is, yeah, I mean, look, I want people to understand that if you're going to apply to a position with us, that you need to come prepared. I mean, we're not your buddies streetwear brand or you know your cousins whatever this is work we're 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 a small company but you know we need experienced employees and for someone to just look if you don't ask you don't get i mean I, that's one thing i always like to say in life you don't ask you don't get but that this was so ill prepared and and the portfolio was Admittedly, they they actually made a pair of jeans. Um, so you know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna credit them, give them credit where credit is due. They had a, they had a they had a, a picture of some jeans that they had made. I presume that they made, but the rest of it was like uh, photoshops of images that they. I'm sure they didn't. You know. Anyways, it was images on garments that I'm sure they never made. 
So they might have found like a generic hoodie uh, image online and then they photoshopped a picture that they might have designed or taken a photo of or just borrowed from somewhere and put it on that. And I was like, that is not a design. Um, and it was like screen captures of their cell phone. So it was very, very ill-prepared. And I was actually a little shocked that somebody was in fashion school, actually in school. And that was what they delivered to somebody. Because I would think that at school, at some point, they teach you how to make a portfolio how to write a resume um, for this industry. So if you are watching, I saw it. And, you know, I'm not trying to put you on blast. I just want you to take some of this criticism to heart and apply that to your future endeavors. Keep working. I know, you know, you did make a pair of jeans. That, uh, and focus on the stuff that you're good at making. Maybe like sewing, you know. Um, and definitely spell check your resume. Uh, there's nothing worse than a resume that is just completely full of spelling and grammatical errors. And you know, look, I'm I'm I make mistakes too, but that one was it was it was a lot. You ha you should have had a friend or somebody look that over, or a teacher uh, look that over. Um, maybe your buddies think it was cool. You know, there was like a a, a monologue in there about their creative vision and it was it was it was word soup it was just all the 50 cent words that you could throw in there it was in there and uh anyways good luck um and i hope that you if you are watching i hope you take it to heart i'm not trying to be mean i just want you to do better and i think that perhaps nobody has uh told you some of those things before there you have it. Yeah. It's your first impression to make. It's, there's no question about it. You know, your first impression is going to be your most important one. Um, and there's nothing worse than spelling skills wrong. Or you did it on purpose with a Z. And I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's tough, tough for me to say. Can you tell us how you picked the word for vulgar selvage? The, um... The original one or the new one? So the new one, um, I mean, there, I mean, F, F yeah, fuck yeah, and hell no. Um, I mean, those are just, give, give me a, give me a hell no. Um, give me a hell yeah. Give me a, a, a fuck yeah. I mean, those are just kind of fun, um, I don't know. It's just kind of fun. I don't know. I, I, there's a lot of, I guess, pop, you know, if you think of Stone Cold, Steve Austin, or if you think of, uh, um, uh, Team America, you know, the, the song from Team America, like it, those phrases are so ingrained, I feel like in, in, in our like culture that, uh, I, I thought it would just be fun to put those on jeans. Um, in your opinion, what's the ideal denim weight? Um, I think it depends on your situation. I mean, a 12 and a half ounce to, you know, 13 and a half ounce pretty much suits all times. So somewhere in there, I think is the, is the most ideal. Um, because I think that if you're going to want to make jeans that suit a lot of people, that is the, the area you want to be in. Um, even a little bit less is okay. I mean, it depends if a, a woman's jean, um, can be a little bit lighter and more flexible. Um, men tend to like jeans that are a little bit, uh, uh, beefier. Um, and those are just generalizations, of course. Those, those don't apply across the board. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that, that, that's, that's what I think. The ideal denim weight is around 12 ounces, 12 and a half ounces, 13 ounces. Um, but it also depends on the situation, time of year, person. So it could vary a lot. Um, any plans to release more strong guy fit in more fabrics? Yes. 
There, uh, there is, and uh, I think I put it on the um, not. I think I put it on the release schedule on the on the blog post. Um, I, I have, I still have to get photos, but um, strong guy is coming in dirty fade, and strong guy is coming in stretch salvage October thirtieth. So in a, in a little bit more than a month from now, we're gonna have two new strong guy options. So coming very soon, guys. I wanted to uh, wrap this live stream up a little bit early. I have a, I have a couple of errands to run this morning that need to be done. So I'm just going to go right into snack time here uh, because we have something fun. And uh, I really wanted to share it with you guys this week. And then I'll be back again next week with the latest, newest live stream. So I know I'm cutting off a little bit early, but... Uh, I'll be back again. All right. So, Risa, yeah. you want to do this one? Sure. Okay. And then we need um, we need one more thing to try. Oh, I've brought. Yeah, this is good. Where does that go? So, for all you, how many dojo fans we got out there? I I found something and I thought it was cool. I thought you guys would enjoy it. So I have a JoJo related item, and. Oh yeah, these corn snacks. So a couple of different things here. So we're gonna start off with uh, the most bizarre thing we found lately. Mijs next week they are on schedule. So we found this at the grocery store the other day. It's a, a it's a, a coffee, you know, a little uh, uh, prepackaged coffee and lime. Coffee, this is the worst combination in history. I mean, we... Yeah, who knows? We haven't tried it yeah, yet. Yeah, what does it say on here? What do we got? Um, coffee and lime. There's 1% juice. It's got sugar in it. Um, yeah, it's a summer special. Exclusive. A summer exclusive special. Okay, well, it is perhaps... We saw it at the grocery store. It was uh, 40 cents, like 39 yen. And we were like, I was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And then it was also 40 cents. So we we're like, it's not very expensive to, you know, to experiment with. Yeah, so, I was curious. And I was like, 40 cents? Okay. We'll give it a try. So uh, we've got coffee and lime. We're going to get that set up. Do you have to serve it over ice? Uh, I mean, we kept this in the fridge, so yeah, it should be fine. So it's fine, and it comes with its own little straw. Let me show. Wait, we should show people how that works. So yeah, they come with their own little straw, and then you, yeah, yeah little kind of neat little situation there. I don't know if. Uh... So it's kind of like ju juice box, but in a coffee cup. Yeah. Okay, you want to take the uh, first dive? Okay. Oh. 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 <laughs> it's gross. Oh, I was expecting way more coffee than this. Oh, this God. Is barely any coffee. Just... Oh, I'm not looking forward to this. <laughs> coffee and lime, everybody. Coffee and lime drink. I like both of those things separately, but... I don't think my hair Yeah, they never they never need to come together. Okay. Ugh. Yeah. You know what I mean? So How did they say it's 1% lime juice in here? It is all lime taste with like, it's like tainted lime. Ugh. Yeah, because it's not just coffee. It's like, co like coffee with sugar and milk combined with lime juice. But not like super sour, it's like just yeah. enough citrus to make it taste like a juice. But with all the other oh, things. That, that was not worth 40 cents. It was worth 40 cents for the reaction though. It's worth 40 cents to satisfy our curiosity. curiosity. Ugh, you want to take another sip? I don't know, this is the first thing I drink today. 
You know what? The second sip is not as bad as the first sip. I don't yeah. want any more of this. <laughs> okay. It's not great. It's not great. There's a reason. This is never going to get made again. So, anyways, if you ever come across this, uh, torture a friend. Um, what's say... the bar behind us? This is our, our kitchen. This is uh, it's my kitchen. It does say new sensation. It's, it's definitely uh, new sensation. Yeah, sure. I, I don't believe that for a second. Um, okay. Uh, then we've got two little things. Favorite alcohol, Risa? What do you got? Favorite alcohol? Um, oh, that's a weird question. I don't know. Let me think about that. Okay. Uh, it tastes like the coffee was purposely brewed so that all the bitter and acidic notes were forward. There was little... Uh, I guess so. I don't know what they did here. It was... What? Purposefully brewed so that all the bitter and acidic notes are... I don't like heavily acidic coffee. Um, so, I mean, yeah. It, it's possible that they did that. Just to like... Because you get a sour taste and then you get like a you know, bitter note. It is. It does have like a, a I called it a, a, did I call it tainted? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, nobody wants this. And it's not even a good lime juice either. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like if the oh. lime taste is a little bit more real. Yeah, I, ugh, I could feel my stomach turning from that. Uh, anyways, let's, uh, cold brew coffee is best coffee. Cold Brew coffee is great coffee. Um, I, I, I would. Is it best? It depends on the time of year. Um, so we've got two more snacks here. This little, little, little like corn fritter thing. I thought it was. What is it? I think it's like a noodle snack. Oh, like a dried ramen. Yeah, but they uh, they go packed into small bits with dried corn in it. Okay, so let's give that a quick shot. Okay. That looks like a fun little snack, corn snack. Never saw this before. This is new. Okay. Or just seasonal. I don't know. I don't know. They always have something new. Oh, okay. They're smaller than I thought they'd be. So, yeah, they look like a little instant ramen noodle. Um, is there any corn here, like in the picture? Mm. I can't really make that. Uh, this is uh -huh. yeah. corn. It's very small. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Smell like corn. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Mm. It's not delicious. Yeah, it's not it's it's fine. It's just like if you want a salty crunchy snack. That isn't a potato chip. This is that. It tastes like you're eating dried ramen noodles. A little bit, not as hard. Right? Mm -hmm. So they have a, a, a softer crunch to them. So that, uh, you know, you're not really just uh, like biting down hard. And then you've got that like sweet corn taste. Like a corn pop. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of a corn pop actually. It's all bad, but no, it's also not, not bad. like delicious. If you like corn pops, you'll like these. Um, is it similar to corn nuts? No. Mm. Corn nuts are their own thing. Definitely, just like yeah, these like corn pops. I would say that this is a very similar taste to corn pops. The way that the uh, cr it crumbles in your mouth rather than just kind of. I think a corn pop, when you chew it, it's just, just one, you know, one bite, it's destroyed. This one kind of crumbles. So, that's the difference there. So, yeah, just, just like a corn pop. Okay, last snack. And this is for all the JoJo fans out there. Because I saw this and I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta get this. Um, I don't know anything about JoJo, as, as you guys know. But I know that you guys love JoJo. So, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Last week, I had that Evangelion cookie that came with a sticker. This is a JoJo cookie that comes with some kind of metallic card. Hello, hello. Uh, so, let's open that guy up and see what card we get. I don't know any of the characters. Um, if this is a good one, then uh, maybe you guys will enjoy it. So, I, these, I guess, are pretty popular, these kinds of like snack and collectible things. Um, hmm. So we got this guy. Pesci? 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 
Pesci. 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 Hello, hello. Pesci. Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. He is number. Hello from Mississauga. On the list of fifteen characters. So okay, so I guess there's fifteen cards to collect, and this guy looks like a vegetable type of thing. I don't know. Oh, they have 26 cards, 15 Tw characters, oh. 5 story cards, 2 visual cards, I don't know what that means, and then special... <laughs> eat the card! No, I'm not going to eat the card, um, but uh, the cook itself missed the mini cards and the chips back in the early 90s. Yes! I used to collect this, there was a Star Trek one, uh, Next Generation, that I really, I think I had every card. Um, I was very into those. Um, but yeah, that was really popular when we were kids. They would have like little trading cards in the ba bags of the uh, chips. Like what on that? Like I had Star Trek ones that I remember. I remember those ones the most because oh, different like series. Yeah. Um, my name is L Luana. Hello, Luana. Some JoJo times making famous and groovy guy fit. I'd love you guys keep asking for JoJo's. One day we're gonna we're gonna try and make that happen. So. It is definitely, of, of any series, it is one of the most requested things for us to do. So, this is the cookie. I, it's just a wafer cookie, I guess. Yu-Gi-Oh! vs. Pokemon cards? I never got into either one. Point. Okay. Wafer cookie. Yeah. I just never like these because it reminds me of... Cardboard. Yeah, I do. I do. I have to say the one versus the one last week with the chocolate in it. This one is better. I like this one. This one, this cookie was more expensive mm -hmm. than the other one, like way more. Yeah, this thing was like two bucks. <laughs> the other one was a buck. So, anyways, Starfleet jeans, maybe that would be fun. I, I, sorry, my mouthful. You wanna water down? No, oh, I don't want no. <laughs> Drink it and wash it down with that. I got my regular coffee here. Okay. Does it taste Jojo? I don't think so. I don't know what that would taste like. Um, love a good wafer cookie. I'm a big fan. I do enjoy the wafer cookie. So, um, if there's any other uh, series of things that you you guys like, let me know and I'll see if there's any. Uh, there, there tends to be food products revolving around a lot of uh, popular. Uh, you know, things like this, uh, uh, property. So maybe I'll, I'll try to find some more and, uh, we can, uh, unbox them and, and, and snack on them together. Uh, can we get a peek of something unreleased yet? Next week, I will show you some spring, summer 21. So how about that? Uh, we'll be, uh, we'll be a full season ahead and, uh, I'll give you a, a super, super early sneak peek. I've, I've already done it a couple of weeks ago, but, uh, we'll see. Zilla stuff. One day. Definitely one day. Is Star Trek big in Japan? I don't yeah. think so. But yeah. I, I mean, it's all, like a little bit older than me, so right. Yeah, there's many series, so it's through the ages. But uh, Star Wars is big here. You still oh, yeah. see Star Wars like Star every day. There's something Star Wars related out in public. Yeah. I think. In my like perception of this, I don't know how real this is, but like Star Star Trek is just like. A, like a different version of Star Wars, like not as good a version of Star Wars, I think people perceive. Maybe. It's not the same. It's not the same. Right. It, like, I, I know I, they have their own following and they have, they're very good, but it's like people here probably don't really recognize that. Yeah. Well, Star, Star Trek and Battlestar Galactica are probably the cold, like they're not even, or Stargate, there's a lot of great sci-fi stuff. And they all don't really apply to each other. Um... Uh, Battlestar Galactica or Bears? How about that? Which one is better? You tell me. Um, I will see you guys. Empire Strikes Back 40th anniversary is coming up. Oof, we're getting old. Uh, hemp canvas 17 ounce? Maybe. We'll definitely have some more hemp jeans in the future. Um, uh, but, like I said, I had to cut this live stream a little bit short. Uh, so I'm gonna leave... Uh, I'm going to leave it uh, at that for now. I will be back again with Risa next week. We'll have some more snacks, more denim stuff, and uh, we'll be here to answer all of your questions, uh, including showing off the Spring Summer 21 collection. I will see you guys in the next live stream. If you need anything from me, 
send me a message in the DMs or uh, leave a comment in the comments below. This is the uh, YouTube uh, uh, replay. Have a good weekend, guys. Bye.